There is a fort in New York where people have been looking for a piece of American history for more than 200 years. So far, they've found a lot of old nails. To date, nobody has died trying to solve the mystery. And according to legend, nobody has to die before the fort can be found. The potential Fort Gardner site is a fieldstone foundation. You can see modern cable and other debris have been tossed into it. Between the foundation and the creek is a sloped, engineered road that leads from the foundation down to the creek bed. This is my friend and research partner, Marie, who owns the property, and she's standing there with my husband, and occasionally my daughter also helps us out with searching. While we've been busy researching, we have also started metal detecting the western side of the foundation. We find a lot of nails, some of which date to the 1700s, but there are also 1800s and 1900s nails in the mix. Well, we think the area was probably used as sort of a dumping ground for farm equipment and old boards. We've also found the occasional screw. I think of screws as modern inventions, but screws have also been made and used since 1700s. The west side of the foundation has a few visible bricks near it, likely indicating a hearth area. The bricks measure out as English-style bricks, unlike the Dutch bricks, which are usually wider and flatter. They kind of match the dimensions of bricks found down in Williamsburg. Just on the outside of the wall with the bricks, we found two hooks. One has a threaded end and one is hammered to a point. Given their location of being near the bricks, we think that they may have been in a mantle over the brick hearth to hold pots and pans. We also sometimes accidentally dig up wildlife that we relocate. <laughs> He's so fast. Hey, buddy. The corner of something. Get on it, kid. <gasps> yes, we got it. Go ahead, pull it out. Bruh. What the heck is that? Oh. oh my god. What is that? I don't know. It's just like a random sheet of metal. With it like could be a, a bunch piece of, of, iron of iron. cast iron pot. Yeah. It could be um, like to clean the. Oh, um, there's a moth on the back. <laughs> right. Could you Look at it. vacate him? <laughs> He's on the thing. Go away. It's not yours. Go away. <laughs> um, oh. all right. We have been also finding curved pieces of iron, which look like part of a cauldron. This piece in particular looks like a piece of a cauldron lid similar uh, to the one in the picture. I'm no mathematician, but in tracing the curve of the lid piece and repeating it, it looks like the cauldron would have been about 36 inches in diameter. To me, that seems overly large for a single family home, but it would make sense on a larger farm or fort that may have had 30 men staying at it. Near the bricks and pot pieces, we also found this little piece that we believe is a buckle. It's probably too small to be a colonial shoe buckle, and in going through books on colonial artifacts, we believe it's more likely a knee buckle, like at the bottom of uh, colonial like bridges. It's amazing to think this was the last worn at least 200 years ago, and the mystery is whose was it? Who last touched this? My husband Brian pitched in and cut the cable out of the foundation so we can start searching it better. On the research side of things, we were able to track down Richard Gardner's original journal and map from 1746 to 1753. We had hoped that it would have his own land and house marked out in the survey book, but uh, the only place he lists himself on the map is in this little slice near um, what we assume is the Rutgers, and it looks like he's wedged in between the Rutgers and the road. But we know he had 170 acres, so... They can't be the entirety of his land there between those two little spaces. So we're not sure what other surrounding land he also owned. The journal is fascinating, though. Richard rode around to almost every farm in Warwick and the Minnesink area and wrote down who owned the land and what it was worth, who they lived next to, and how their conversation went regarding leasing with New Jersey. Many of the names are Dutch, as you would expect of early New York records, but there was also some English and Scottish names in the area as well. 
I had bought 100 little flags to mark where the metal detector went off, and within about 30 minutes, I used all of them up. There is so much more to dig up, both in the research and in the ground.